Miss. Now, I am delighted to welcome S.J. Fani Nordia. Fani joins us this morning to discuss his latest book, The Third Reel, which has already been described as the literary uh, highlight uh, for the year. So, a very good morning to you, and thank you so much for joining us, Fani. Thank you, Ayanda. Okay, so now it is set in 1986 in London. You have uh, the young Etienne, he's 22 years old at that time. That's right. Just managed to escape uh, conscription in South Africa. So he's there studying yeah. um, and, 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 and he gets involved into something that's far bigger than himself. I want you to pick it up from there. Sure. So, as you say, he's left South Africa to escape conscription from the then conservative city of Pretoria. Um, and in law rather in film school in london he um doesn't really succeed very well he um realizes that perhaps filmmaking isn't quite his metier he then uh, finds out about a 1930s a lost 1930s german film made in uh, early nazi germany by a small group of jewish filmmakers and he gets fascinated fascinated in fact obsessed by by this film uh, at the same time in london he has uh, started living in a community of, of squatters, of artist squatters. You know, in, the, in Thatcherite Britain, a lot of young people were living in abandoned buildings illegally, and they were, there was this rather bohemian yes, uh, yes, yes. culture of, of artist squatters that, that were very much opposed to, to what was happening in Thatcherite Britain. So uh, he also meets a, a German, a young German by yes, the name of... a love interest there. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> So Axel is the name of the German, and uh, Axel becomes his lover. Axel is an artist and a, a pediatric nurse in London. And then uh, Axel disappears, in fact. He goes to Berlin, uh, doesn't return. Etienne realizes he has no of way of finding him. And then Etienne himself goes to Berlin to start this rather labyrinthine and ultimately quite dangerous and complicated search for both the, 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 this lost film or the, the reels of this lost film and his lover Etienne. It then begins this web of intrigue where you're just on tenterhooks the entire time and not quite sure what's going to happen on the next page. And, and I thought it, it was also quite profound that it was set in a time where a lot was happening politically, a lot was happening socially, and you managed to weave that into the storyline. I mean, he comes back to South Africa as well, so it's not just in the UK. Tell me a bit of, of, about why you chose to do that. You know, sometimes uh, one doesn't quite know why one r writes certain stories, and if you did know, maybe you would stop writing them. Um, uh, you know, my, I guess my own background is must have much of my adult life I spent outside South Africa, particularly in London, not in that era that I'm writing about. And I did know Berlin quite well as well, so I spent a lot of time there, so maybe that has something to do with my choice. But Etienne certainly finds himself uh, amongst various uh, oppressive regimes of different degrees. You know, he's escaped, as we said, apartheid South Africa. He lives in rather conservative uh, Thatcherite Britain. He then goes to Berlin, both East and West Berlin, we should say. He becomes an exchange student at, a, at an East Berlin film school. So, um, and then of course, there's a the backstory of, of Nazi era Germany. So, um, so I was quite interested in, in this era, particularly in young people living these specific kinds of urban lives at a specific point in history. They have these vague, perhaps naive, even misplaced mm -hmm. sort of re revolutionary ideas, ideas about how urban societies could and should be in the future, how one can be radically free, uh, live freely, love freely, make art freely. And um, so this was a good time for, for um, exploring those sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. Now, ironically, of course, uh, only 16, 17 years into the 21st century, uh, authoritarian politics are rearing their ugly heads again remarkably, you know, in the era of Brexit and Trump. Which, uh, and, and that just made me wonder <clears throat> whether or not your own background, you know, having studied law, um, you went on to then go into the creative industry as well and, and, and attained a master's there, and whether or not your own background has something to do with this. I know that you write in Afrikaans, you write in English, you write in Dutch as well. Tell us a bit about yourself. So, yes, so I um, left South Africa in the early 90s, in my early 20s, and then... Uh, studied law in both the UK and then in the US. I then uh, worked as a lawyer, corporate lawyer in fact, uh, for a long time, for 12, 12, uh, 12 years or so. 
I was away for a total of uh, time of, of 16 years. So, um, you know, I was essentially trapped in conference rooms for 15 hours a day <laughs> uh, negotiating complex business transactions. Uh, a world very far removed from South Africa, from, I guess, my Afrikaans roots, from, from writing, certainly. And so then, in, uh, particularly after the, uh, the financial crash or, or crisis of, of 2008, Eight, yeah. I sort of gradually started getting disillusioned, I think, with what I was doing then. And um, I realized there was another place I could back, go back to. I did write as a young person, as a student in South Africa. And um, then I came back. And um, you know, a lot of my English acquaintances thought it was a bizarre thing to leave <laughs> sort of life as a professional in the financial doing world. very well at that. Uh, and, and exactly, and then uh, coming to write fiction at the, uh, literary fiction at the southern edge of the world, as it were. So then I did a master's degree in creative writing um, with Marlene van Niekerk at Stellenbosch University. And then from that, I managed to publish a collection of short stories. Yes, they, they did tremendously well at, at, as well. That was then, I, yes, indeed I do, as you say, I do the Afrikaans and English. Uh, it was published in the UK and the US and uh, I didn't do the Dutch translation, I should say that oh. that was done by someone else. Okay. And some of it gone, has gone into some other languages, Italian and so on. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so one, um, it's, uh, of course, when one starts writing, you have no idea whether you would even get published. So I was, was very, very grateful for that. And it, it has changed my life quite yeah. significantly. So you definitely don't regret that move? I don't regret Well, that I tell move. you, the rest of us who are the recipients of your work definitely don't regret uh, that move by you. But very quickly, what do you hope to achieve with the third reel? So once one has read it from cover to cover, they've been shocked, they've been surprised pleasantly, they've been given a lot of food for thought, I tell you that. But, but what do you want your your readers to take away from this book? Gosh, that's always difficult to, to say. You know, when one writes, you, um, you're so engaged with the work, you don't necessarily think of the reader. Maybe you have some sort of ideal reader at the back of your mind, or maybe one writes what one self would, what would like to read. Um, I would just like, I think, people to engage with it seriously. Um, it's, it is a serious book, but I think it's also something of a, of a th it's various things. It's kind of a, what might be called an, you know, an initiation novel or sort of a, a Bildungsroman, as they would traditionally call it. It's also a cold era thriller in, in some parts. And um, it's, it's a, a book which does want, uh, below the surface, want to engage with the world we live in now and the world then um, quite seriously. So I think I would just like people to, to, to read it with, with, with some attention. Well, Fanny, I tell you, it's absolutely beautiful, and I do thank you for that. It's a great way of escaping because you find yourself, you know, enthralled in this particular world as well. I do appreciate your time, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, SJ Fanny Nodia is the author of The Third Reel. Up next here on Book Club, we chat.